Hello there everyone. Welcome back to Around the Grid. We are going to continue and currently we are in a bit of a pickle. Let's be perfectly honest here. We're currently in 2025. Uh, just giving you a quick summary here before we get going again. Which means we're having a bit of a big change to regulations. But because we decided to gamble in the terms that we are now developing the car for this year rather than next year. We might be in a little bit of a pickle. Now, Paris does have the championship potentially in hand. We have 340 points. We're 100 points behind Red Bull. And, well, we are going to need to show here to perform. But, honestly, we might actually be able to catch up to Red Bull with show and Paris here. That's kind of going to be what we're going to gamble on. Currently, we are in a little bit, as I said, a pickle. Uh, inspection failed for the cars here. We do need some new replacements, so let's just get that out of the way. And, uh, yeah, we are lacking a few pieces. That's the best way I can describe it. We're lacking a few pieces on the car. So, what I think I've been planning here is straight up to go for, yeah, we we'll sacrifice some brake cooling. We are manufacturing new ones, so that is good. And we do need to report place suspension for both cars, the underfloor here as well. And honestly, I think what we are going to do is still just gamble on getting things done this season. But we are in a bit of financial trouble. We don't have a lot of money. And currently, we aren't actually running all four projects. We're only running two of them. So it's going to be a uh, it's going to be an interesting end to this season if we can manage to kind of snatch that final uh... see we are manufacturing suspensions we'll actually get them done in time for the race we'll get at least one chassis in time for the race in Singapore so yeah it's a bit of an interesting situation we are 100 points behind Red Bull we have about a third of the season left so everything is still up for grabs but we do have a little bit of a financial issue and currently we are doing a little bit of research but at the same time, even if we start doing research now, it's a little bit too late in such an important season. And as you can see here, we're losing 40% on our chassis, we're losing 40% on our, well, everything. So yeah, it's not going to be a... It's not going to be a good one. That is the best way I can describe our current situation. Not going to be a good one at all if we lose this going into next year. So even if we do start doing a little bit of research, it's not going to have a big effect on the car. Well, it's going to have actually a fairly decent effect on the car. Don't get me wrong. But at the same time, we are probably going to end up with about the same kind of situation as we would if we... Uh, if we... Uh, let me put it this way. We're going to end up in the same situation as the AI in terms of our research, most likely. So next year, it's going to be rough if we can't get the win this year. But, show did start off uh, with a race win last time around. And with Paris also being able to win races, I am looking very, very hopeful, I guess I should say, on us being able to turn this season around over the last few races that we have left this season. Now, unfortunately, it did take a few days here before I got the second uh, episode going, after my little kind of break. But, uh... Yeah, this just ended up being busy again, which is very unfortunate. Throat has been a little bit sore. You'll probably be able to hear that throughout the start of this video. Um, as I'll be speaking a little bit more softly, a little bit more silently, so I'll probably have to boost it a little bit. So, yeah. Let's just get into Singapore, I think. Uh, we do have money to start projects, but at this time, as I said, we're going to be prioritizing just trying to win this year's uh, title. Because we don't really have much of a choice. And if we fail, we're going to have a bit of an interesting side project, I guess you could say, in the sense that we're going to end up doing a rebuild uh, for next season, to some degree. Which could also be actually a very, very interesting project to do. Okay. ATR starts today. We have a new ATR period. We can, of course, use that to kind of mediate the losses for next year. We have a show here who's got a point of braking, point of accuracy. That's going to help. 
And uh, yeah, that should be good. We also have now ticked over, so we have a little bit more money. But the question is, do we use the CFD period here now to do research? And I think we will. And I also think we will do research for... I think we'll just do research to be on the safe side. Because even if we focus on developing the car at this point, it's not going to have much of an effect. So, yeah. I'm thinking that is going to be the best bet that we can do. And we'll focus on the things that we usually do for the car. And the ATR period that we just unlocked, we are going to be using on the underfloor. It's just important to get the, the underfloor up and running again, I feel. I'll also do a chassis research here, just because of the fact that chassis research is fairly inexpensive and it also does have a high effect on the high speed uh, cornering ability and also the engine cooling which in a situation where we are financially strained is actually going to be kind of uh, kind of important for next year so that should be a-okay now in terms of victory here we are actually well rested i think i forgot to set that up for the session uh probably shouldn't have <laughs> probably shouldn't have taken a break right before or rather, been busy at the time that I was. But not much I can do about that. So we'll just keep on focusing the pissed up errors at this point. Because I don't think we can do anything about the pissed up times. This late in the season. The priority here is just going to be to get those error chances down. And I'll go ahead and re refix or rather re change the pick crew planning after the Japanese Grand Prix. I think that's going to be the play here. So we'll just put in those four days. Nothing major. We'll be, again, as I said, readjusting as we go. And we should have at least one replacement right now, which we will put on car one for the time being. As I said, we should have, we should have suspensions for both cars, so it shouldn't be a big deal. And in two days, we'll be able to start manufacturing a, well, a front wing at the very least. Underfloor research has been completed as well. And as I said here, just so that we have a little bit to go on next year, we'll probably do uh, ATR period. Just going to double check here that I didn't use ATR for the initial research. And by the looks of this, I didn't. But you can kind of see how bad next year is going to be with our drag reduction going down to under 30%. Uh, so, yeah. We need to win the title this year so that we can jump ship. Basically, we have we have done a gamble, and if that gamble is to pay off, we are going to have to kind of jump ship it. But as you can see, as a kind of quote-unquote bad team going into a new period, you can do some pretty insane things with research. As you can see, these are the research games from using a CFD period. So if we have we had, as you know, the worst team on the grid gone full on research, we could have made a pretty insane car for next year, which also can kind of backfire. So we'll do this just to help out Alpha Tower, Alpha Towery. It would be sad if we give them a title and then they, you know, fade into obscurity afterwards. So we'll do a little bit of research here at the last third of the season. It's probably not going to help us in the title chase. Probably going to be a detriment. In all honesty to that. But that should be that should be fine. Let's install the suspension on both cars. Let's install the chassis here on car one. I think show needs it more. Just a little bit extra boost. Uh previous race result seventh. So not the greatest. Paris one. Okay. I thought he won because of the fact that he had 26 points, but maybe I misremember. Let's just check. Let's just check because I'm, uh, as I said, been a little bit a while. I'm a little bit lost. And also, as you can hear from the voice, I'm a little bit not feeling too well. So, Paris won Italy. And Sandwald, how did we do there? Mm, we didn't do well. Okay, so maybe I'm a little bit too optimistic, but that's fine. That is absolutely fine. It is better to be optimistic than pessimistic, but at the same time, you should be a little bit realistic. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get two more front wings made. I think that is the best bet that we can do. And 
we are just going to have to gamble on show here. Scoring a few points so we can catch up to Red Bull. That's going to be the big, that's going to be the big goal. Let's see here. Fastest lap, we can go for that. Q2, both cars should be in Q2, no problem. Uh, qualifying position, both cars in Q3. And with that, we'll jump into Singapore here, see how we're doing. It's going to be a rainy Sunday, which means this is probably going to be a pretty bad weekend for us. But I have hopes. Let's uh, head into it, see how we do. We do have some contracts here that are running out. But again, we don't need to really worry about re, you know, re-signing those until a little bit later on in the season. When we have a bit more money. So, uh, yeah, we'll not worry too much about that. Let's head to Singapore. Let's see if we can uh, catch up a little bit here on Red Bull. We qualified second and fourth, technically behind both Red Bulls, but due to the fact that uh, Leclerc has a penalty, we're starting first and third. We have a stop in between us. And we're going to have a bit of an interesting race here because it's going to start raining about midway through. And I've had a little bit of a look at the strategy, but it's kind of hard to pick a good one. And as you can see here, rain around lap 25. Potentially lap 28, so we do need to keep our tires alive until that point. And I've had a bit of a look at it. The best bet that we have here is probably to do a somewhat of a two-stopper. Uh, sorry, do a stop before the rain. That's what I'm saying, two stints before rain. And I think that is going to be the best bet. Start on the mediums, go onto a soft tire, and push from there. But the thing here is, if the rain arrives early, if the rain arrives late, this gives us flexibility to kind of deal with that with these soft tires. And that's going to be huge for kind of the strategy here, if you will. So that's kind of what we're banking on. We'll see if we can make that work. But yeah, the rain here is going to make things a little bit problematic. Uh, it's kind of hard to judge because we don't have the best uh, weather center. And at the same time. If it comes earlier, we should be okay. If it comes later, we should, we're should we going to be screwed. And you might say that, oh, we should start on the hard tire. We could, but the thing here is, even the hard tire is going to have to be run kind of normally, maximum of aggressive. And with that, we'll be losing out guaranteed compared to the rest of the grid. Because uh, the tires for this track, the softs have about 4 tenth advantage. Um, take about 11 laps for them to become equal to the mediums. And in that same vein... The hards will take around 11 laps to become equal to the mediums and the softs. So, basically, it'll take way too long before we get any sort of advantage. So, I'm going to gamble. We're going to gamble on starting on the mediums, going onto the soft tires. And hopefully being able to create a gap before the rainy period. Now, we could do for show here we can actually put him on an extremely aggressive strategy which is two softs immediately but i don't want to do that and the reason for that is incredibly simple we have to take into consideration that this is singapore red flags are fairly common here and this little cloud here at the end does tell us a little bit of an interesting story in the sense that it's probably gonna be dry towards the end of the track i don't like this line but yeah it might be dry it at the end of the race if we get a red flag and I would love to have a soft tire available for show sure that's doable for Paris that's going to be a little bit more difficult it's going to have to be a used one but as you can see already these used tires are about four tenths quicker so we're gonna to have to take that into consideration but at the same time I think this is the best we can do it is still a bit of a gamble we might have to pit a little bit earlier than anticipated but for sure we could we could go full on full full on all in with two sets of softs and leave the medium for later. That is too viable. But yeah. Uh, can we do that though? If we were to do this and then... This, how would that fare? Actually fairly well. I think we're changing show strategy. Is what I'm, see is what I'm seeing. I think we're going to gamble show on two softs because that should allow him to retain first. It should allow him to get away from Verstappen. And then we can have Paris kind of be the team player this race. I think that is the best gamble. I think that is the best gamble. Let's go for that. Final checks have been carried. And this is it. The Singapore Grand Prix. Lights out, and away we go. 
I do not want to avoid the high risk curves. That was a misclick. Okay, so Paris is falling backwards. Nothing too surprising. Fighting Bottas at the moment. But Show did maintain his position. We have soft tires on the Red Bull. We have soft tires on Bottas. A couple of hard runners. For the most part, mediums for virtually everyone. Which is kind of what we expected. Can Paris be able... Is Paris able to find back here? Because if he is... That would be massive. It's still hanging in there, just barely. But I think that was it. Yeah, that was it. Oh, maybe not. So yeah, Paris already getting uh, getting into it on lap one. But yeah, that tire advantage definitely working in in Bordas' favor. Can we have show here? Maybe create a gap to Verstappen on lap one. That would actually be huge. Verstappen is closing the gap at the moment, so doesn't look like it. What I think we'll do here is actually just start harvesting already. Try and get that battery up uh, up uh, to maximum. We should still be able to stay with Verstappen, I think. And we should probably do the same here for Paris. Harvest that battery, get it recharged, and then we can get overtakes done and try and, in Show's case, get away from Verstappen. In Paris's case, get bought ass. <coughs> And chase down the rest of the grid. Well, Verstappen in this case is the rest of the grid. But yeah, not the worst start ever. Science hit is uh, holding up everyone on the hard tires. We already got 2.6 seconds down. Uh, five seconds from the leader. So this uh, strategy with a stop might actually be viable. But it's going to, of course, carry a little bit of risk still. There's just no way around that. Because of the fact that we are pitting early. Uh, and the fact that pit stops in Singapore take quite a lot of time to perform. So, we still might be in trouble. Let's see if we can actually get Verstappen now uh, in the first DRS zone. We should be able to. And hopefully now we can actually also create a bit of a gap. We're also going to go ahead and get Paris neutral. And with that, he too should be able to get by. Hopefully sometime soon. Degradation is also lower than anticipated. That is actually kind of huge. So, we're almost away. Going to be a DRS zone here that Verstappen gains a little bit on. But, we have actually created a bit of a gap here to Verstappen. And that is, as I said, pretty massive. Paris has gotten his way past Bonas. He can start chasing down Verstappen. And with us not pulling Verstappen with us too, that is going to be good. Although, there's still a bit of a fight here. Do I want to deploy? I want to deploy just so we don't waste more time. Deploy, get away from Bonas if we can. And then catch Verstappen. That's going to be the, hopefully, recipe for success here. But yeah, so far I'm very, very happy with what I'm seeing. Uh, the starting to show on the soft tire definitely was the correct strategy, I think. And since we now are within DRS of Paris, sorry, of Verstappen, we're going to go ahead and just recharge. Okay. Has there been any changes to the expectation of rain? It's been a lap earlier. Two laps earlier, I think. Lap 22 when it starts. That's going to be interesting. And we have Paris here. Overtaking, potentially. While recharging. So that would have been that would have been massive. But at the same time, I think we're just going to have to recharge for one more lap. Recharge, and then we'll launch an attack. Basically after the first few corners. I think that is the best way that we can do this. Show already gone about four seconds of a gap is huge. It's huge. Yeah, we're going to deploy it. We're going to start the attack here. Should get it done under the uh, effects of DRS. Hopefully. Apparently not. So we'll just sit back. Recharge the battery again. Trying a next lap. Keep in mind, um, Verstappen does have a tire advantage that is pretty significant. So we don't want to create any problems with that. If we could get five more seconds of the Magnuson over the next couple of laps here, that would be massive too. Currently 33.8 versus 35.1. So it's going to take a few more laps to pull that off. But if we pit and come out ahead of Magnuson, that is actually, as I said, that's going to be massive in its own right. Let's put uh, Paris to neutral here. And that should keep him fairly close before we go into... Go into the final few corners. 
so we can try and get by Verstappen. Doesn't look to go well this time either, unfortunately. So we're kind of stuck behind Verstappen at this point. There's just no other way around it. And even if we overtake, I don't think we're going to be, you know, get much done. But we did get the overtake done there. Question is just now, can we, with what little battery we have left, create a one second gap? And that is doubtful in its own right. And we're basically just chasing down, basically just chasing down show at this point. So, yeah, not good. And show does need to pit now. So we're just going to get him in, put him on that second set of softs. And rainy still, slated for lap 22-ish. This looks good. We'll be able to pit him around lap 24, 25. And that should be fine. Now, we aren't going to get out ahead of Magnuson. Unfortunately, we're going to be in this kind of troublesome area. So I can only beg that Cho gets the, the pits up done quick. But yeah, we're not beating these guys out. No way. Just barely beat Leclerc out. So we're going to have a DRS train immediately. And that is not going to be a good thing. But at the same time, it is a gamble. It is a gamble that I decided to take. So we'll just live with with my silly decisions and the question now is do we just pit Paris at the same time because he too does need to pit Verstappen needs to pit, Boris needs to pit, Russell needs to pit well medium runners don't really need to pit but at the same time we should be about 8 tenths quicker at this point looking from a degradation perspective so I think it's safe to just get Paris in put him on the soft tires probably not this lap maybe next one and Verstappen actually pits this lap, so go ahead, full send it, boy. And we will be, as I said, also trying to move show forwards. So we'll do a little bit of recharging, run a little bit on aggressive, so we don't heat up the tires too much. But Verstappen comes out behind us, which is kind of key here. Question is just, can Paris beat him out? Because that would also be, in its own right, huge. Yeah. Recharge a little bit. I think we're going to go ahead and just recharge till the end of this lap and then start making moves. Back up to attack. And let's see if we can get that first Red Bull. We did not beat uh, Verstappen out, unfortunately. That is kind of what we expected as well. But uh, the key now here is actually going to be to get by Verstappen quickly. But at the same time, we have cold tires. Let's use that time to recharge. Show is get starting to make moves. That too is very important. And with him now being passed, most cars gonna make it a little bit easier. Yeah, Show's just flying at this point. We're gonna go ahead and recharge while we chase down the rest of the grid. And for Paris here, we're probably gonna start attacking on this very, very next lap. We have the two Red Bulls kind of fighting each other, so the best thing here would be that they took each other out. But they have currently left the, each other alone. Verstappen is charging ahead. So Leclerc didn't actually hold him up for long. Deploy it from Paris. Again, we should be a lot quicker than everyone around us, which is kind of what we are banking on. So let's see if we can get Paris to get started here, getting some overtakes done. Confidence is still not very high. So... Don't want to take any, at this point, unnecessary-ish risks. Although I did use this entire battery. So yeah. yeah copy. Bit bad. But as I said, I think we'll be fine. Let's see how we do once we get very, very close to the rain here. So the rain here has begun. It is pouring down. Show has made his way up to 5th. Paris just... It's just stuck. That's the best way I can describe his current situation. Just can't get uh, the overtakes done. And we've had to recharge him a couple of times. So for now, we're just leaving him kind of to his own devices. Show, on the other hand, has made his way up to fifth place. But he has Verstappen right behind. Which is a bit of a problem. Because A, we don't have energy. And Bottas has actually opted to jump in early. Now, I do think that the best strategy that we have on hand is just going to be to jump directly onto the wet tire. Uh, I think that is going to be the best. But yeah, this is kind of a... Kind of a weird situation, uh, fortunately here. Starting on the hards probably would have been better because the rain did arrive early enough. So, bit of a uh, bit of a mistake there from strategic standpoint, which is my fault. 
But yeah, we are getting here to the point where we're just going to jump in. Go for the wet tire for both cars because it is the best we can do. Just going to double check it. That actually did do the wet tire. I did. So let's see what we can do. I assume everyone is going to pit. And it did happen like that. Everyone is pitting. So let's hope that we don't have a problem. We didn't. We actually are going to come out in third. So Pod has actually jumped everyone by pitting early. But he's on Inter, so he's going to have to pit again. Paris up to seven. So he actually also jumped someone during the pit stop. So this is actually pretty good. I should have done had a look at the pit lane itself. But 110 really did solve the problem of traffic in the pit lane to some degree ruining your races. So I do like that. We are going to tune both of them down here to standard before we overcook these tires severely. Because, uh, well, they're only 95 degrees. And as you can see, currently we are overcooking them quite a bit. So, should probably have tuned them down a little bit earlier. But nothing we can do about that. We'll just have to kind of ac accept it while we wait for proper rain to arrive. But this is a situation that everyone has to deal with. So you can see Verstappen, everyone here is cooking their tires. Uh, kind of tempted to do a little bit of recharging too, since everyone is kind of running slow already. Do the same here for for Paris. And as I said, right now it's looking okay. Show is kind of at risk though, so we'll go ahead and tune it to neutral. Let the tires cool down a bit, no? We're trying, Paris. We're trying. <laughs> We're trying to do that, my man. We're also under threat here from the Ferrari of Science, so we'll just put Paris also to neutral. We can do some recharging once we can actually run these on full attack. And I think that moment is arriving. I have some vibrations. So Paris has the arrest damage, as you can see, and that is mainly to the fact that he's running uh, his final arrest. He was gonna, we're going to have to take a penalty at Japan. I didn't want to take the penalty here because rain, so that is what it is. But yeah, we'll have to try and deal with this. But that's actually is actually going to start losing time now, I would think. Yeah, a second slower, so within seven laps we'll catch up to him. And uh, this camel might actually almost have... This gamble might actually pay off for him because he just need to do this pit stop. So I'm 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 very very interested to see how this is going to play out if the AI kind of stays the course. It could be very very good. So yeah, that's going to be interesting to see. And at the same time, now we'll just recharge. We'll run kind of attack ish because well we can. It is getting wet enough for it. And we'll try and get the overtakes done here for show. If he can get Alonso, that's going to be huge. If Paris can get Hamilton to start working his way a little bit up, that's going to be huge as well. Because currently we're in a very good position. Both the cars are ahead of the Red Bulls. But of course, there's a lot of difference in points between third and first. So if we can, we would love to finish higher. We're probably also going to have to, you know, recharge the, the fuel a little bit. Or rather, save some fuel. Get back on the positive side. But that isn't something that is a huge concern at the moment. For the time being, the bigger the bigger thing here is just getting past the other cars. And show here is actually a good position to do that right now. And it gets it moved on beautifully. Can Paris do the same? No, unfortunately. But yeah. We if Alonso and Bottas run side by side. They could really, well, never mind, Verstappen just got the overtake done. <laughs> I was hoping to use him as a as a shield. I think we're just going to have to go back to harvest, cool down these tires a little bit by running aggressive. And that is probably the best we can do. I'm also going to go ahead and harvest a little bit here for show as well. Get a little bit of extra energy for when we catch up to Alonso. And that should be very, very soon, so... Just turn it back to neutral. We're going to go ahead and deploy at this point. Because if we deploy, we should be, once we get to this straight, close enough to just make the move into the next corner. Well, we're a little bit further further back than I thought. We might be using a tad too much energy here too, to try and get make this happen. But yeah, bot ass has fallen far back, so... We'll have to see how that gamble pays off. It hasn't so far. 
but it could, and that's going to be the big one here for them. See now if we have what it takes to get the overtake done. Paris has fallen back quite a bit here from Hamilton by four seconds. He lost three seconds behind Bottas, I assume. That's bad. I was a little bit too focused on show. But yeah, show is having problems. I didn't actually realize that Bottas has fallen that far back that quick. But it's understandable when we're on five millimeters here. He is going to end up being probably a big loser to through these kind of attempts. But we'll go ahead and reach out, show. We'll try another attack once we have full battery. And for Paris there, we'll just have to try the best that we can for him, honestly. Let's see how we uh, look once we actually do the pit back onto Inters. We've had a bit of an incident here. I don't know who exactly is involved. Albon and a McLaren. So nothing that will have an effect on our race unless we get a safety car. And looks like just a slight touch. Both cars still moving, so nothing's going to come of it. Okay, so currently we're recharging both cars. Paris is recharging while chasing down Hamilton, but you can see that we are a lot quicker because we already caught up. So, yeah, we need to get the move done. I might just go ahead and turn the overtake aggression even higher. Uh, for once, we actually do try and make the move happen. Didn't work last time around. But, yeah. I'm a little bit uncertain on how we want to... How we want to play this, basically. For Paris here, I'm just going to deploy, push fuel. And honestly, yeah, I think that is going to be what we do here for show as well. Just push fuel, get up close, and then we deploy. Paris is already close enough, and he's getting the move done, maybe. Yes. Very nice. Let's deploy for show. And he should. Potentially, yeah. That is the wrong way. I want to go to 2x. Track condition has changed the damp. We are getting back onto Inters. As you see, and we're actually going to have to rise to the end. So our strategy here of using our soft tires might have backfired. But it's going to be so few laps that any soft tire that we have is going to be able to do the job. There we go. Good job. The question is now, when do we want to go onto the Inters? That is going to be the kind of important decision to make. And Alonso and Verstappen has opted to go into Inters immediately. And I think we don't have any choice here. We're just going to have to respond. Um, I don't know where they're going to come out in traffic. Not traffic at all. So again, we're just going to have to respond here. We don't really have any choice. We're going to go ahead also and deploy what little energy we have to try and kind of maintain position for show. And also to some degree for Paris. Because again, don't really have much of a choice here. Okay, show enters the pit lane. Verstappen is uh, probably going to come out ahead. We'll have to see though. It's going to be close. We did just barely make it out ahead. That is good. But at the same time, that was a little bit too close for comfort. I would dare say. Game had a little bit of an incident. Uh, let's turn that back to neutral. Let's recharge Paris so he, we can launch attacks. And for sure, it should be okay, but at the same time, I would like to recharge. And I think what's going to be kind of key here, we can see Verstappen is actually attacking at this point. What's going to be kind of key here is actually us just getting onto the soft tires before Verstappen. I think that's going to be the big decider, if you will. But yeah, so far, things have gone well. Hopefully, they can continue going well. But this has been fairly interesting so far, I feel. We are running a little bit too close to the top temperature here, which is 100 degrees, 105. So while running attack is kind of risky, it is fully justified here. I do have a little bit concern in terms of our fuel usage, so we'll turn it to low for now. Uh, if you can get the fuel back to positive before we go into the, the you know soft tires too, that would be good. Because uh, we did not regain as much as I would have hoped over the course of that. Uh, that wet stint. So, yeah, we do have a little bit of a problem ahead of us. 
For now though, it doesn't look like we're gonna get any overtaking done. Uh, and uh, the Inters, we might actually get overtaken in turn. But yeah, we're just gonna keep on pushing. We're gonna allow, as I said, the fuel to get back onto the positive side if we can. But if we can get an overtake done with, say, Paris, that would be huge. We do also need kind of battery here for show. Because that is actually why we are almost getting overtaken here. So we're going to harvest into some corners. But yeah, the staff in here is most likely going to end up just overtaking us, I think. Yeah, he just has more energy to use and, of course, more fuel. Gonna push and try and just get back in front. So, we're currently still holding him up, but at the same time, not a good situation for us. Because Verstappen is quicker, you can you can see it. But we should be causing a little bit of pain for his tires, but not really. He pitted a lot before us and he has more tire to work than us. So yeah, bit of a challenging situation, but he should be out of energy at this point. Uh, he must have used energy to attack with, I would think. And if we take a quick look here, Verstappen. Uh, yeah, you can see he had 3.6. He's down to 1.2. He's also pushed fuel a little bit. So he definitely were attacking us pretty aggressively at that. Okay, Paris. I think we can keep both of you on balance now. You have gained a lot more fuel. Paris here, we're going to try and get past the uh, Ferrari. Saving the energy would be nice too, but it's going to be a while before we actually get onto dries. So getting an attack done would be would be good. And we get it actually done here. We might actually be able to recharge and get Alonso as well. So for now, just run like this for a little while to get a little bit of a gap. Then get back to harvesting. And once we harvest at about 80% here, we'll try and launch another attack. But yeah, you can see. Verstappen attacked us. He ran out of energy. He ran out of fuel. He's now slowing down a little bit, which is uh, huge. Moment, does it look like he's raining? So that is looking looking good for us. Really, really good for us. Let's recharge. Show. Let's get a little bit of conservation going. Although, pushing here so that we can pit uh, and have a gap on Verstappen would probably be for the best. So let's put him back to neutral. Paris gets the overtake done while recharging. So let's take a look at the re Apparently, we are fighting a little bit. Going a little bit back and forth, but uh, Paris comes out ahead. And that is also pretty huge, because that now means we can start chasing down Verstappen. I'll take that. I'll take that any day of the week. But yeah, for now, we're just going to try and maintain. Let's see what we do once we actually do pit for the dry tires. So we have a decision on our hands right now. It is still damp, but it is going to be dry fairly soon. And as you can see here, the dry... Dry tires are going to have to live for 16 laps. And we can make that happen by adding a... There we go. I don't know what I was stuck on that. By doing a soft tire and just running it on standard. It is doable. We can also do a medium tire and run it on full attack. Which in theory is slightly quicker. And running a soft tire on standard, but leaves us more exposed. So it's a bit of a rough one, honestly. Uh, what I think we do here is that we say Alpha one more lap because we have three seconds on Verstappen. Piastri is pitting though. <sighs> Going full attack on the mediums should work too, but yeah, we don't really have much tire left on these softs, so. Soft tire standard, I think that is going to be the best we can do, honestly. And for Paris 2 here, soft tire probably standard is going to be the best we can do. I think it is going to be the best bet. We'll just get both cars in. Verstappen goes for another lap. Same with Alonso, same with a lot of the other cars here. But I think this should be okay. Show comes out, Paris comes out. He's going to be a little bit stuck though behind uh, Gasly. Gasly should be getting out of the way because technically he's on the wrong tire. Let's see now if Sho can get Verstappen, and he should. Pitting on the soft tire was definitely a lot quicker. So, yeah. Should jump both cars there, or all of them. And Paris jumps up into third place. So, pitting early, definitely the correct choice. But the question now is can we keep these tires alive till the end? 
Sapin has opted for a medium tire, which is going to allow him to attack. But as you saw, uh, these soft tires are still quicker than the medium tires by about four tenths. So I'd say we are in a really, really good position. For now, though, we are going to just allow Paris to try and catch up to Verstappen, as he is. And Sainz there has set a new fastest lap. And Verstappen too, four tenths quicker than us, five tenths. So he's pushing. But if he's pushing, we can still make something happen because, well, he'll push his tires probably into the abyss by the end of this. But it is still a little bit worrisome. We do have enough time though, five seconds, even if he gains half a, half a second each lap, it's not going to be enough. So the big one here is going to be Paris. Is he going to be able to take good enough care of his tires to catch Verstappen? And right now, looks like we're kind of just maintaining and doing, yeah, about the same lap times. Fastest lap is going to be something that's going to be difficult for us, but Alonso is going in a bit of a charge there, just running at 128. Probably with the help of DRS, of course, but at the same time, that's kind of scary. I think once there's five laps to go, we'll try and run a little bit attack or aggressive. Because again, the longer this goes on for, the more of an advantage this officer is going to get here if he's pushing the mediums, which he, he should be. But it's a bit of an interesting one. For Paris though, push fuel. Try and get a little bit of an advantage back. We still have a lot of tire to play with. Show we can just leave as he is. He's doing well. But Stappen is back to pushing. He took it half a second on that lap. From show that is. You can also see it here on the lap times. Piastri is going to give him DRS. Or maybe not. What are the lap times looking like? 38, so 5,000 difference there in lap time. If we're going to launch an attack, I think we're going to have to start going now with aggressive. But even then, this is going to be kind of a risky endeavor. It's the best way I can describe it. Because if we run out of tire, we are suddenly at risk for the cars behind. We should have DRS now though. Yeah, we did. That's actually kind of massive. But yeah, catching with Stappen, I think that is kind of a no-go at this point, honestly. The only real way we would do that is by running full attack. And running full attack is just a little bit too draining on this track but I don't see any other way to do it so let's gamble full attack we'll run a little bit of deploy and we're running full attack in now and deploy for that matter for show as well because Verstappen has caught up oh that is bad I was too focused on Paris and allowed Verstappen to catch up this is gonna be this is gonna be me throwing away a win because we're gonna need to recharge now and then re-overtake And Verstappen is pushing, like he's pushing everything he has. We can stay within DRS, we still have a chance. But at the same time, it's not good. It is not great at all. Still think that we're just going to have to kind of settle with running behind him for another lap. Recharge the battery. Save a little bit of tire. And then attack on the last few laps here. Because both of us are starting to lose out in terms of the tires that we have. We're probably losing out a bit more than he is. That's the problem. And as you can see, Paris just is not catching up to us at all. Okay. Let's push fuel. Let's go aggressive. And let's try and close this gap. Sergeant, though, is going to give him DRS at one point, most likely. And that might very well be what ends us. Full attack. We are going to try and attack on this next lap. But as I said, Sergeant here is going to give, most likely. No, we're good. Okay. Very few. 
Final lap. Main thing here that I need to pay attention to is the fuel. We're actually watching the wrong car too. Because if we run out of fuel, that's going to be even worse than if we, you know, lose first place. We are back in front. We have enough energy here that we should be able to push for the entirety of the lap. Paris is not going to be able to uh, do anything, so we'll just slow him down here so he doesn't blow up his tires at least. But Sho is making the difference now. He is getting back out of the Stappen, so... The question is just, can we keep this going for the last few corners? The answer is... Most likely, yes. Very good. Shame that Paris couldn't make anything out of this, but this is a huge result for us, honestly. Really, really huge. Okay, we take the flag. Let's see how everyone else stacked up. I need to run to work, so this is going to be slightly rushed. Show ended up in uh, first place. Pretty good. Didn't get past his lamp. Leclerc got that and even made it 14 places up to 6th. Paris 3rd. This should still be good enough though. We have the Alfa Romeo, the Ferrari. Fortunately, the gamble with the Inters didn't really work out for them. But it was a brave strategy. I'll admit that. Paris here is getting caught up a little bit by Verstappen. But uh, I wouldn't be too worried. Show jumps up a place. And we do gain 13 points there on Red Bull. That's not going to be enough though. We don't have enough races at this point to have 13 points be good enough. So we're going to have to have some good results if we want to win constructors. Drivers, I think we still have a good chance in, but even that is going to be close. So let's do the best that we can here. It's going to be a close championship, but uh, that's just how things are going to have to be. We'll go through things in just a second, but as I said for now, I'll be running to work and I'll be doing the other race once I come back. And I'm back. Sorry for that little bit of mess, but uh, honestly, it's uh, been a day or so. Wasn't feeling good after work uh, when I recorded this, but honestly, it's just how things are going to have to be. The voice was completely broken, so from this point forwards, I'm going to be probably a little bit more clearer, probably speak a little bit uh, better, not as nasally, and honestly, probably be in a bit of a better mental space as well when I'm not feeling like uh, crap again. So. We all had a fairly good outing in uh, in Singapore here with two cars on the podium. Show winning, Paris third. We did have a bit, little bit of a close one with Verstappen, but honestly, all in all, an acceptable race weekend. Now, we are going to be going into the Japanese Grand Prix in just four days, which could, of course, be a little bit interesting, a little bit problematic. We will accept the decrease in the cost cap. We have a failed rear wing and a failed front wing. So luckily, car part-wise, we're still fine. Uh, we are making front wings, so that should be good. Powertrain is a little bit of concern, particularly on uh, on Paris's car. So we'll have to deal with that. But replacing a rear wing and replacing a front wing is not an, it's not an issue at all. And now we can actually imp uh, improve the car by putting that new chassis on both of them. We do have kind of reached, I think, the end of our development you could potentially say, but at the same time, I think we are in a good spot. We will, of course, get these new side pods in the car at one point. It's a very minor upgrade, but let's face it, in racing, every single part does count. But yeah, for now, this is where we're at. We are going to have to try and manufacture, get them on top of the parts. And as I said last time around, we are currently having Paris's car in a position where we are most likely, unless it rains, Going to have to eat a penalty at the next race. Again, staff, not really a concern for the time being. These red uh, symbols here annoy me. But at the same time, I'll probably just sort that out at the next part here. Because it does take some time to get that done. Well, it takes a minute or so, but still. Front wing manufactured has been completed. And with that, I think what we want to manufacture is probably a chassis. Because they take long. Suspension is more likely to fail, though. So... Let's go ahead and get two suspensions made. We'll get two chances made afterwards. And we still have just about enough money to kind of get things sorted. We also do need to, because I kind of forgot about that, uh, the pit crew. If you, are do, if you do change the pit crew after every race, do remember to do so. I tend to forget. And currently, we are still tied. As you can see, we're 34%, which means we've got 45 
and in, yeah, 52. So switching engine ERS and gearbox between sessions is not a good thing to do if you're trying to lower your pit crew. Uh, but sometimes you might have to eat a little bit of the negatives of running damaged engines, ERSs and gearboxes, and that might actually be where the AI does it. Because currently, again, I sim practice, I'd switch engines between uh, practice and the race, or practice and quality before as well. So we do need to keep that in mind. But as you can see, we have fairly high fatigue here. But even then, we didn't really have any pissed up errors. So it's a bit of a weird scenario, I think, where you switching engine parts doesn't actually take full effect until after the race weekend, which is a bit of a weird situation. That's the best way I can describe it. It is a weird situation, honestly. Let's go ahead and get two chassis made. We're probably going to need them by the end of this year anyways. And we are getting closer now to that 2.5 million deficit. So I think we'll just make wait with making the new side pods. All the time being that, it's going to be okay. Just so we can make sure that we can buy that ERS. Okay, we are ready for the Japanese GP. Let's go ahead and get the targets set up. Fastest lap should... Uh, probably will not happen, let's be perfectly honest here. Uh, if we are if we are under pressure, probably not going to happen. But at the same time, we're going to gamble. We might have a wet quality, but we'll have a we'll have a dry race. So we are going to eat. We're going to we're going to take the bullet here, or eat the bullet, or whichever phrase you want to use. We're going to bite the bullet and uh, go ahead and take the penalty here for um, for Paris because it is high chance of safety car. It is fairly short pit lane. And generally, I do feel like we do, if not very well, at least acceptably, acceptable, I guess is the right word. We do acceptable. Uh, I can't speak English today, clearly. Sorry about that. Let's just go to Japan. Let's get set up and see if we can have a good race weekend. So, yeah, as I said earlier, we are going to have to buy a new ERS here for uh, Paris. We're going to go ahead and do that. It's going to leave us with 50k in the bank. But at this point, we kind of are going to have to. There's just no other way around it. And as you can see, quality here is going to get fairly interesting. We're going to be starting immediately on Inters. So uh, this could be a very, very interesting weekend just from that perspective. And we are going to have to do something like that. This should give him a fairly good setup. Both cars here should be, if not 100%, very close to 100%. We already are 99% with Paris. So it looks like we are going to have a fairly good Japanese uh, quality here, hopefully. Let's see where we actually end up. So already this race weekend, things are looking amazing in the sense that Verstappen is going to be starting last. As far as I know, he's not taking any penalties, but that alone is huge. And the main reason why this happened is because we started on inters, we did more inters, and then we did drives at the end, and he never did his dry run. I have no idea why, but... Uh, we'll take a freebie like that, of course, any any time of the day. But this, of course, is going to make, uh, potentially, for a very, very challenging qualifying. As you can see, we're 4th and 11th, so hopefully we can improve a little bit on that. So the quality has reached its conclusion, and with Russell taking a penalty, the show will be starting front line with Bottas, and then most likely Leclerc and Ocon on the second line here. Unless, of course, Russell is just getting hit with a 5-place one. But yeah, this is a fairly interesting one. We still have the clone fifth, but we are starting better off than the Red Bulls, uh, arguably. And with Verstappen here having a mere of a qualifying, this could be the the big one. So we're going to have to come up with a strategy that's going to allow us to maximize potential. Paris is starting in 11th, so didn't lose super many positions. It's as if he's qualified first, which uh, is, of course, good. But he is starting far enough back that it's going to be a bit of a problem. So let's go ahead here, have a look at the compound performance. Softs here, 5 tenths quicker. 4 uh, tenths difference, so, or 4 hundreds, not tenths. 4 hundreds, let's be honest, hundreds is the second one, tenths is the first. And with that, we can assume that he's going to be quicker, the softs are going to be quicker for 12 to 13 laps compared to the mediums. Medium too hard, it's, uh, well, a bit more interesting. It's about three tenths, and with just a hundred difference between the two tires, the mediums are going to be better for about 20 ish laps. Sorry, 30 ish laps. My math is a little bit off here today. I'm a little bit scatterbrained. 
Sorry about that. But yeah, for 38 slabs, you can expect the mediums to be faster than the hards. So that is quite a quite a powerful, you know, combo. So we want to try and use soft medium. We want to try and avoid, avoid hards if we can. And with that, we're going to have to figure out a good strategy here. So Paris in 11th. Let's start with him first. So we do want to do something that's going to allow us to move upwards. And we have two choices here. Either we start him on a soft tire. We try and get as many overtakes done as we can within the first laps here. Then we jump onto the medium tire. We could try and stretch this one for a few laps as well. And then we might jump onto a bit of a soft tire towards the end. This is all viable, so to speak. And it can work. But at the same time, it's going to put us in a bit of a... It's going to put us basically par with the basic strategy here in terms of what we're doing so we could try something a little bit more aggressive which would be a in this case a three stopper most likely and as you can see it is getting somewhat quick and it is potentially going to be a little bit quicker than a base strategy but in this case because it is you know because it is um japan most strategies there are going to end up being about the same in terms of pace. The only other things that we could do would be uh, something like this. Where we kind of take advantage of the soft tires. That could actually work. It is about four seconds quicker. But that would change up the strategy a little bit in the sense that we probably want to start on the medium tire. Go full attack. Then we'd probably want to go on to a standard soft. Then maybe another standard soft. Uh, as you can see, uh, running them light is a option, but this could work. This could not be. This won't be a terrible idea. And it is still quite a bit faster than our initial, you know, guess. So I think this is going to be what we do. We run the mediums to full attack, and honestly, that's probably going to be the best bet for show as well, because the mediums are going to be the tire that we can kind of stretch a little bit. And 15 laps in should be good enough that we can take advantage with these soft tires. They won't hold an advantage against the mediums for their entire lifespan, of course. But again, in general, this should be faster than the other strategies that are available to us. And that is why we elect to do so. But yeah. A bit boring to put both cars on the same strategy when they're starting in different places. But honestly, with how degradation is at 1.10 and uh, everything, I think this is the best strategy that is available to us. Anything else would require us to mess around with the with the mediums a bit more. Say, take the mediums, maybe run them a little bit lighter. Go on to the hard tire and do just straight up a one-stopper. And as you can see, that too is viable in terms of just from a pace perspective. But we're definitely going to be losing out a ton towards the end here. So I think this is the best one in terms of being competitive. Again, the reason why we prefer attack strategies over... One stoppers is due to how confidence works. If you get overtaken, you lose confidence, and confidence is a huge, huge boost to your pace stats. So again, that's why we would like to have the first stint at the very least be aggressive, and then the second and third stint, which we usually have, can be whatever we we kind of deem here. But yeah, good setups, good everything. Let's get started. See if we can make something out of this race where Verstappen has handed us a free gift. And he starts back there, so it's been boosted a little bit. And it's lights, out, and away we go. lights out, away we go. We have Bottas with uh, soft tires next to us. That could bode uh, problematic, but it looks like we had an incredibly good start. And same can actually be said for Leclerc, so that's not great. Paris has gotten one spot already, so a very good start. But yeah, every car on medium or soft tires, which is kind of what we uh, anticipated. And honestly, having Bottas block Leclerc is going to be actually a very, very good thing for us. So, so far, I'm very happy. But this is just, you know, a third into the race. So, you should be happy at this stage. Well, halfway into the first lap of the race is what I'm trying to say. But yeah. We're currently going to be kind of stable because, again, the first, uh, after the first, uh, the start here, everyone is going to be pushing for three, four, five laps. And once that happens, that once that is done, that is when we can try and create a gap here. And honestly, having Bottas kind of act as a pulley wouldn't be the worst idea. So we might need to save some energy at the end of this lap, turn it neutral probably around right now. 
and basically save energy for getting overtakes done once the other ones slow down to kind of guard their talents a little bit. That is probably going to be the best thing uh, available to us, I do feel. But yeah, shows maintaining first, Paris is still in 10th, but again, with the RS, that's going to probably change. And if, us having energy at this stage is going to be great as well. We are going to need energy, of course, also to get away from Bonas and Leclerc. So I'm going to go allow Show here to recharge a little bit. He did overtake, but that's fine. Put him back up to neutral so he can actually keep within the RS distance. And for Perez, who has recharged to the maximum, we are going to start doing overtaking here. So let's go ahead and deploy. Probably not the best part of the track to start deploying. But this should give us close enough that on the main straight we might get one of these cars with the help of DRS. So let's see if we uh, if we can get either the Aston, the Williams, or maybe even both. Because right now we are definitely challenging the Aston. And we did get the move made there. And we've actually also overtaken Bodas. So we do want to recharge here. Tire temp is a concern, but as can see it goes up to 135 degrees. As long as you don't go over the maximum, you are usually fine. Unless you have really, really low, uh, really, really low, what's it called? Tire deg. I would assume Paris is going to get Sonoda to this lab and then Albon. And then he's going to join the uh, the crew up front. The staff and still down in 17th is what we like to see. But yeah, so far, definitely promising. Definitely promising. But now though, we'll try and allow Sho to get away from... Uh, from Baldas, it's going to take a little bit of recharging to do so. Once we have full energy, we can try and push and get away, which would be, you know, the end goal here. For Paris, it's just getting as quickly as possible up the grid order. And so far, I think we can be very, very happy with how things have gone. Let's see if we can uh, get away from Baldas here on the next few laps. Here we are. It's just a few laps later. We did get away from Baldas, as you can see, but unfortunately, Leclerc immediately managed to overtake Bottas and catch up. So the gap that we created came to, to naught, really. Paris is still doing a good job here. One and a half second behind Russell, but he's too just going to have to deal with that DRS train. So we're just going to have to recharge show here, try again. But uh, currently, things are going kind of uh, as we expected. So currently, we're getting very close to our pit window here. We might want to push these tires a little bit further, but as you can see here, Everyone else is on the soft tires of the cars that we're currently fighting. So I think the best bet that we have here is actually going to be pit both cars to try and overtake the cars around us. And as you can see there, Show actually has an extra set of mediums too. So we can do some cheeky cheeky things towards the end of this race. But I think just pitting now is going to be what pays off. I would think Paris can get Ocon and Russell if uh, they do not pit this lap. We, of course, get Leclerc too if he doesn't pit this lap. So this is the best bet that we have. Everyone is within the next five or six laps going to be pitting. You can see that with everyone else here. We had two decent stops. And we are going to come out in a bit of traffic here for show. But he still comes out way cleaner than Paris. So depending on when people pit here, that's going to decide a lot of this. But we are going to allow show here to just deploy. In the sense that it should allow him to overtake these three cars that are currently a bit of a problem. And Paris here, can he get signs? I think we're just a tad too slow, unfortunately, to, to make that happen. But yeah, we did try. So that pitting early didn't pay off as much as we'd hoped. Shoto does get one move done. Has both Astons kind of running blockade in front of us right now, which is not great. But I still think we're going to beat Leclerc. This is going to be key. And for Paris... How many cars is he going to be able to, to beat out here? So, not as many as we probably hoped. But as you can see, Leclerc and Sainz, out of the cars that are pitted, those are the only two that are currently out of us. Gasly has yet to pit, so it is still looking somewhat good. And unfortunately, I've been running them on full attack, which is not what we wanted to do. And even then, we couldn't really make uh, much out of this, so yeah. We've made a little bit of a mistake with uh, not turning down the tires in, in time. So that's a yikers for me. Bodas has pitted now. I would think we will be jumping him with both cars. And we did. No, we didn't. So Paris actually come out potentially a little bit worse for wear. But still four cars to pit. He'd still be in fifth place, so to speak. So it's not all bad. 
And he even gets the overtake on Science on track, although it's still a bit of a fight. But yeah. Currently, I think we can be very happy. Show is definitely first ahead of Leclerc. But uh, we'll have to see exactly how this ends up playing up as we have a bit of a yellow flag there for a second. But yeah, let's speed along here. We'll have to see what we do in terms of the pit stops here. For show, we might just end up uh, using that second set of mediums on attack or aggressive. Because again, we have pushed these tires beyond what they're capable of. So what I'm thinking we're going to have to do here to kind of make up for that is straight up just run these as light tires or light degradation. And it's going to be about a second slower. But it is a it is a way that we can solve the issue of the higher degradation from making a mistake. And I think that is going to be the key here. Other than that, we can with... Uh, we can, if we really need to, go into a medium tire here. It's going to be about the same in terms of pace. Well, a bit slower, actually by a lot. So I guess we want to try and avoid the medium tire if possible. And just run the lights off if we really, really need to. So yeah. We have a plan. Let's see if we can make something from it. Uh, we still have Leclerc in a bit of a, you know, compromised position. Paris is up in fourth. Verstappen in 13th. Most likely another pit stop from most cars here, as you can see. Verstappen onto... Well, I would assume some of these cars went onto all the softs, but we definitely have a bit of a... You know. We have a bit of a lack of soft tire compared to the cars in front of us. Or cars around us, rather. In front of Paris, behind show. For now, though, we're just going to sit back. We're going to keep on working. Let's see where we're at once we get to the final pit stop of ours. We're getting increasingly closer to that final pit stop. We're currently pushing what little we have left in these tires. But as you can see, show has fallen down to third. A uh, fair bit behind both cars. Bottas and Leclerc. Bottas is actually doing fairly well. Paris has fallen down to fifth. So we'll have to see if this actually works out for us. It's going to be a little bit of a... A little bit of a rough one, but I think this is going to be the best bet that we have available to us again. So, could we have done two attack uh, stints on soft tires, potentially? Could we have run a little bit more aggressively? We can actually have a look at that. Because again, you want to make in, well, take into consideration what else can I do? What is available to me? And if we were to say run attack plus attack, which is something we can do with the tires that we have available to us. It could potentially be, well, about the same in terms of pace, honestly, I would assume. It's actually slower than running this. And that's just how important degradation has become. Uh, so what we're going to do here is run it a bit safe here, run them in light. It's going to pay off in the long run. Cars a little bit too close to each other here, but I think this should be fine enough that we can double stack. Unless, of course, we have an error. We did not. And we're going to come out in 7th and 10th. So... Not too shabby. I think we can get overtakes done if we need to. And we have them on the right setup this time instead of running them on full attack. Wasting a bunch of good tire. So yeah, let's see what we do here. We're going to have to wait for the rest to pit because they're going to have to. You can see it here. Alonso is running on kind of empty. He's pitting right now. Hamilton pits get out of the way. And I think that's going to be the case for a lot of these cars. They're going to be pitting to get out of the way. We have a stopping up in fifth. So... It's still a very, very open race. And if we take a look here at expected pit stop times, it's 23 seconds. And show is within that, so he might be able to threaten, uh, threaten uh, Leclerc. But yeah, it's a little bit a little bit problematic. Paris here, not going to get Russell. That is very unfortunate. So we'll have to see how we're doing in terms of lap times. 29.8, so we're getting about a second a lap here uh, for both cars. But we are struggling a little bit with cold tires. I still think it's worth it to run uh, run it slow. Leclerc is pitting. Can we beat him out? I think Show can. Just barely. But we are going to have to probably do something for Paris to get by uh, Russell. That's actually going to be kind of important. So, well, Russell has now started going more aggressive on those tires. So as long as he does that, it's not a big deal. But at the same time, we're going to manage. We're going to try and get past. Bottas is finally pitting. And I think both cars here are actually going to be able to beat him. No, we actually got stuck again. So yeah. Let's try and get him on this lap before he warms up his tires properly. But yeah, we we do have a little bit of a problem here. Verstappen in 12th is what we like to see. Gasly, P12 
Piastri and Norris are going to have to pit, though. That's going to give uh, him a bit of a boost. And Sainz, too, are gonna, is going to have to pit. But I think Sainz is so far ahead that he should be okay, I would think. Might need also to go Paris a little bit more aggressive here to get him by. But, uh, yeah. We're in a bit of a, a bit of a weird situation where, honestly, saving tire is probably the best we can do at this stage. Save tire, try and get the overtakes done. But honestly, there's no no way we can really force this through in an easy manner. So that's going to be a little bit problematic. I'm trying to think it. Show running in a DRS train is not a bad thing. Honestly, because we're saving tire compared to the other cars around us. By the time we get to the end of this, we should have better tires. We could, of course, also run a bit more conservative to slow down even further. Or, now that show has actually gotten past, we can have him deploy for a little bit. And try and extend that gap a little bit now. Even while running on light. Which would be great if we can do that before we get to the DRS zone. Doesn't look too likely, though. So, what we're really doing here now is just extending the gap to, to Paris. Which is not good. But yeah, for the time being, settle in, I think. Try and make something out of this. As you can see, degradation is fine at the moment. We can probably run standard now towards the end, by the looks of things. So for Paris, we're probably going to have to do that to just speed things up a little bit. But we'll see. We'll settle in. We'll see how we do over the next uh, few laps, and hopefully we can get, get something good out of this race. We're getting closer and closer to the end here. We have used all of Paris's battery to get him within DRS distance. Uh, hopefully here of the car in front. We also have a Piastri that did block us one time when we got within DRS distance. And currently we're still losing out a bit here. Paris is probably not going to get into this fight, which is going to suck massively. And we have a Stappen back up into 7. So we're kind of squandering an opportunity here. That's kind of what I'm feeling. But with 6 laps to go... We also don't really have anything we can do in terms of pushing the tires more. We kind of have to just settle in behind Leclerc. We are keeping up easily at that matter. So we're kind of just settling in here behind Leclerc, trying to keep things going. Unfortunately, again, Perez. I best thing, I, best way I can describe it is Perez probably getting stressed by Piastri at this point. Piastri just put it onto fresh tires. So we're kind of holding him up, which is understandable if you consider it from that angle. But yeah. Bit of an bit of an interesting one, and again, we're just we're just losing a lot of time from what I feel is Paris defending against the back marker, which is very unfortunate because we are running out of laps, we're running out of time, we're running out of tire, and even then, we're struggling to just keep up here. So what we could do, of course, is have Show try and overtake Leclerc, which he kind of did here on his own, and now we do the. Uh, Always defend maneuver, which slows you down quite a bit. Uh, but we could try and do things like that if we just overtake naturally while kind of running a little bit conservative. To just slow down Bonas and Russell. Because every point matters in the, the tournament at the current stage. So it is kind of we are forced to do things like this in order to have a chance. And honestly, I'm tempted to use the energy that we have now try and close down because again you see that we're just getting immediately left behind of course tires are a concern they're a huge concern and Paris here is probably going to be a little bit out of his step as you see we lost one and a half seconds that lap like they're running 29s so we're running 30s we're running over a second slower that lap for no apparent reason other than maybe the tires are being a little bit cooked so yeah I think we're gonna gamble here Start the attack, go full, aggressive, and for Paris, we're going to do the same here. Just run full attack, try and catch up to Bottas, try and get the overtake done. And for show, we need to get the get the move made on this straight right now. If we are to... Uh, if we are to win this race. And with that, I probably should go ahead and go high overtake aggression here. Paris 2, probably deploy. I've probably squandered this one a little bit, honestly. Because if we want to have any chance, we do need to beat the, the Red Bull here on this track. And show just doesn't seem to be up for the challenge at the moment. Maybe? Is he going to get it done? 
Oh, he bullies Leclerc a little bit, but he gets it done. And Perez, is he going to be able to do something here? Because show is done. Perez can't get it done, unfortunately. Just a bit too much of a DRS train. And Perez did get held up a little bit after the pit stop, so... Potentially should have pit him earlier. But this, uh, he probably also got screwed over quite a bit by us running attacking and he's stuck by another cast because we did waste a lot of time. And the gradation is kind of huge here, so... Yeah, not the greatest. We did beat both Red Bulls though, which is something we can be happy with. But at the same time, I don't think the gaps are going to be big enough. We're going to need a huge, huge one before the end of the end of the year. So seven points here for show. Another four points for Perez. So 11 points gained. Again, it's not massive, but we do retain the lead here and we do extend the lead in the championship. We need Perez to kind of perform a little bit better at this point. And as you can see, we're close to 80 points behind. We have five, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. We have five tracks remaining. 10 points, 10 points a track is not enough. We need a Red Bull DNF or we need to do one twos for the last few races here. So we do have pressure, let's be perfectly honest, but at the moment, I'm enjoying uh, playing the game again, and this does make it more exciting, so I can't complain too much. But yeah, that is the current scenario. We're probably also going to have to try and focus a bit more on snatching fastest lap. I think that would help. But next up, we have the sprint in Qatar. Actually, Dad, I did, did kind of forget about that. We have sprints too. Qatar. We have Brazil. We have uh, Coda. So there's also still three sprints in the window, which could tip the scales in either direction. So it's still up for grabs, but we're going to end today's part here. Sorry that it's just two races. Again, been quite muddle-headed today and yesterday and the day before. It took me a few days to actually get this recorded as a result. But yeah, I'm back. Uh, uploads are probably not going to be as often as before because again, work busy quite a lot, honestly. But I'll try my best. So you'll see me around, hopefully bit sooner for the next one i i do have an f1 uh f1 fm manager video that i'm going to be releasing tomorrow so that's going to be fm but hopefully we'll have another we'll have another f1 manager out on either friday or saturday we'll see thank you for watching hope you've enjoyed and i hope to see you around next time bye bye